Hello and welcome to. Oh. I'm sorry, I've got my glasses on, can't see. You're recording? Yeah. Okay. Hello and welcome to How to Stay Married So Far. Like on... We've been away for a few weeks. We've been away for about five weeks. Mm. Since I think that's lockdown, because... really. Well, it's lots of different reasons, actually. Mark kept saying, oh, we must do another How to Stay Married, and I kept sort of putting it off. And I've really thought about it. Why? And actually, it's very, very grueling mm, doing they're these. They're, they're really, really tough. The fact that we don't edit them is very tough. Yeah. Sometimes things get really personal. Sometimes when I read nasty comments, I do find it hard. I try not to, mm. but I do find it hard when people are judgmental and things. So I've been a bit reluctant. But now I've had a break, I'm ready it's to It's weird back. because it's, it's, one of, it's one of the areas in, in all of our sort of output, if you like. For those listening, we put a lot of stuff out, podcasts about mental health and, and chats about mental health on our YouTube channel, The Swile Adelies. Um, and it's curious because this, How to Stay Married So Far, is one of the ones that generates extraordinary warmth, support and loyalty, like most of our content mm. We're blessed with the people who listen and follow us. But it's also, if there's ever going to be somewhere or something that does generate sort of real hostility, it can be this. So I do, I do appreciate that and I do sense and that. And also, you know, we are, we are, you know, laying our marriage mm. out there. Mm. And that's, that's very, very difficult. Mm. That's really difficult. I mean, I'm not a private person, as people might guess. I am a professional oversharer. Yeah. I come from a big family where we shared everything and everybody knew everybody's business. It's just normal to me. But sometimes I just feel a bit, you know what, I just need a bit of a break from from that. Um, Whereas yeah. you see, I'm quite... Because quite... it's much more revealing. Because our reality show is very revealing. It's very mm. raw. It's unfiltered. But to sit opposite somebody for half an hour and just talk in depth about something about your personal life, very personal life, mm. is very, very... It's very... It's very draining, it but, can be. And also, one of the other things that people often ask is, why are you putting yourself through this? Why do you do this? And I think that's probably accounts for why we don't do it on a regular daily mm. basis or weekly basis or anything like that. I'm not going to have sunlight lighting me horrifically in a minute. Um, is, is that it's... It, the reason we do do it is that we do think, and there are, and it's been proven in our family through couples counselling, through being me being in, uh, a recovering alcoholic and addict, uh, it's been proven that sharing problems is both useful for us. Mm. Um, it provides a forum that actually, although we sit here and do this for the duration of this podcast, we don't sit here and do this in our lives much. So it is actually also an opportunity for us to connect with each other. And we hope from it that there's some kind of connection for, for guys listening. But today, what are we talking about? I mean, we're in the heart and the midst of the coronavirus epidemic. No, we we're did just, do... It's the Monday of week five. Yeah, and, week and six, actually. One of our uh, subscribers on our YouTube channel, um, I think his name's Jake, mm. has is really, really suffering with heartbreak. I think, I believe, that he broke up just before lockdown. Mm. But we've been noticing that a lot of people have been saying that they've had breakups, you know, they've been living together and then they've got to, had to go home to their parents because they've broken up yeah. in lockdown. Um, so we thought it might be quite good to talk about heartbreak. Generally? Yeah, generally and our own personal experiences. Yeah. I mean, when we, we have another podcast called Confessions of a Modern Parent, uh, a Modern Parent, yeah, and we whatever subject we're tackling, we always go back to our personal experience mm. of it first, mm. don't we? You know, what yeah. age we we first drank, you know, all that mm. sort of stuff. So I thought... Why don't we start this podcast off by talking about our own experience mm. of heartbreak? Right. So I only had, well, it's strange. I did have my heart broken, but I kind of broke it myself. Right. In that. Stop the words straight from my mouth. In that, in that my relationship, it was my first ever relationship. And you've heard me call him Blue Boy. Everyone that watches Lee Swim and knows I call him Blue Boy. Blue Boy. Because okay. he was so white oh. that you could he looked blue because his veins were so blue. Wow, okay. Yeah. Very visible veins. Very visible veins. And he always had a spot in the middle of his head, forehead. And my sisters used to call it his third eye. I thought that's mean. Did they say I that know. to his face? No, probably oh, not. Right. But um but he yeah, so we were like friends first. 
He really, really liked me. We were all working at the National Theatre as our charrettes. He really liked me. Mm. I liked him, mm. but I didn't fancy him. Right. Um, we were both like new, like we were both auditioning for drama schools at the same time, mm. and we both used to, you know, ticket tear, and then we'd sit, listen, you know, at, at the, and then we'd watch the shows together and blah blah blah. But I wasn't interested in him at all. Um, and then, but we were great friends. We started all my drinking started with him. We used to go out. I remember I used to drink gin and tonics until I got so ill. How old were we looking at here? I was seventeen. Right. So long time ago. Um, and so we were probably friends, probably for about nine months. Um, and he's, he had this brother. And now when I think about it, his brother was a white snake. His oh. brother was much older than him. Did he have blue skin as well? Yeah. And he was at drama college. He was already at drama college. Right. So he's ahead of us. And he right. was like, oh, he's already at drama college. Because we, all he wanted to do was go yeah. to drama college. And... Um, so anyway, he, he helped me with my audition pieces, his older brother. Anyway, he pounced his older brother. And he had a girlfriend and everything that I really liked. At the right. So it all got terribly complicated and it was awful because I didn't really fancy him, but I was in right. this situation where I'd kissed him in his flat. Anyway, so I can't remember the exact detail, but I ended up realising that I liked John. Right. Yeah. Um, it's very unusual that. So isn't John, it? John being the the brother. John was the friend who fancied me that I didn't fancy him. Oh, I'm not supposed to say their name. Yeah, but hang on. So I'm really confused. You ended up kissing who? His brother. Whilst you were going out with him. No, I wasn't going out with him. We were just friends. Right. I didn't fancy him. So I didn't so think his brother I didn't really him. pounce. Well, he did. He had a girlfriend. I thought oh, he was right. helping me okay. with my audition piece, and then suddenly he was giving me a kiss. That's the oldest trick in the book. Come I know. It was like, piece. come and look, watch, look at my etchings, wasn't well, it? What were you were going to say then. So, yeah. anyway. So, you ended up with him? No, with, I didn't. No, I didn't fancy Blue him at all. Boy, original yeah. Blue Boy. So, I ended up with Blue Boy. Right. So, very much at the beginning, uh, it was he really liked me, I didn't like him. Then we got together, and I really, really liked him. Yes, he wasn't, he was, he wasn't a looker. Right. But he was funny. He, like you, he was really smart. Not you know me. No. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do this if you're going to start going into the I'm empty not, really did, detail did, did and getting jealous. Straight after saying he wasn't a We will stop like this you. podcast right now. I'm just well, telling you like that now. You. I don't want you all day going, so, uh, oh, for this, God's uh, sake, crack this on. blue boy. Crack on, this is taking forever. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I want to, I want to hear what how, how so anyway, Blue Boy broke Yeah, oh. The reason I'm explaining all of this was that the power yeah. balance was tipped, all tipped my way kind of thing. Because there is that thing, isn't right. there, when you're young. It's like, oh, who likes you? And, oh, I don't know if I like you, and then I like you anyway. So that was very much our vibe. Right. Um, he was smart. You know me, I like smart people. I like people that are cleverer than me. That's what I like to hang out with people that are cleverer than me because I think you learn lots. So he was that. He was very political. He was... So though he wasn't good looking, everyone was like, why are you with him? He's not good looking. He had all this other stuff going on. So, so I like started Marilyn to Monroe really... Miller. Yeah. So I started to really, really like him. And he was the first person that I am... <laughs> mm -hmm. And so my feelings got really invested in him. We were very, very close. But I was always kept in that position of like, I'm not really going to let him know how much I like him right. kind of thing. Right. And we were together for a couple of years. Apologies for the sunlight beaming on my face. Sorry. Do you want to move? No, no, no. We have to crack on. We can't edit. So a couple, we could just shift around while we're no, still no, talking. Right. Um, so we were together a couple of years. We would live between our two flats so i had this flat on the side of the house he had a place in hackney and um yeah so i used to i lived on the 30th floor of a tower block in hackney which was all very interesting right um his mother hated me that was really difficult um and so this idea of that i always wanted to be a bit distanced because i think a part of it was because he was better educated than me and therefore are much more knowledgeable than me and cleverer than me I think I always felt like I had to have the kind of power and make him feel think that I wasn't as crazy about him as I was mm. so I used, to, <laughs> I used to do this thing right where I used to go and see this friend of mine a girlfriend and I would say and I'd come back and he'd say 
oh, like, where have you been? He wasn't kind of a jealous type, mm. really. And I said, but I was trying to get that jealousy from him. I was at that age. You know, when I was young, the whole jealousy mm. thing was lovely, but I hate it now, and I hate yeah. people who play jealous games. But, um... But um, so I used to say that I'd gone to a man's, a friend of mine that was male, which I wasn't, I was going to my and go, well, and he'd say, well, what, why, why, do, why are you going there all the time? I used to say, well, I'm not, I'm not playing Monopoly. This is when you were going out with him. <laughs> yes! So you were clearly inferring that you were having... Yeah, so sex. I think, again, stupid, youth, just trying but to... this is your boyfriend. Yeah, but I was, but I wasn't meaning him to believe it. I was being playful, but of course he was believing this, and he. I'm not surprised because you yeah. were saying it. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might not have meant it, but all he received, this poor blue chap, was. I wasn't playing blue Monopoly. Chap. I wasn't playing. Monopoly. Did you buy the blue houses? Did you buy Angel and Islington? This poor blue chap. So, no wonder he believed it. It's all you were saying. Anyway, right. so, um, so you've been together a couple of years. He was working at a theatre. Um, I was working at another theatre. And he was mostly living with me. And then one day he came in and we were chatting. And I said, I just feel like there's something not quite right. Is everything all right? And so he yeah, said, yeah, I've just passed go and didn't collect 200 quid. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, I'm really glad you've asked. I, I don't think I'm in love with you anymore. And I was like, but you wouldn't have noticed a thing on my face. Nothing. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought I picked up on something. So, all right then. So what should we call it a day kind of thing? He said, yeah. Anyway, he stayed that night. And I didn't like show any upset or anything. And then when he left, I just... What was it? Sort of fear broke about down in tears. No, no, didn't have a shake. No, I don't want you to ask me any other detail like that oh because you're going. Kind of your thing. eyes twitching. No, I'm just, I'm just, babe. You, you're seventeen. No, is the answer okay. to that? No, no, I wasn't at this time. I was no, nineteen. 19. We got okay. together at seventeen. So, and then when he left, I just broke down. I was absolutely heartbroken. I was crying my eyes out. I was so bad. Anyway, he only bloody forgot something and came back. I'll never forget this because I was in the kitchen and I was really crying and the door went. Yeah, because he still had a key. And the key went in the door. And by the time he comes through to the kitchen, he wouldn't have known I was upset at all. So you removed all evidence of upset within the nanosecond. I just managed to just, him. yeah, pretend that I was so fine. So you were heartbroken. Were you... I was heartbroken. Even though you've been playing silly games. But I was playing silly games because of this power struggle. Because I felt that... Was it a power I struggle or did to... you just feel insufficient? I think it was feeling. And I think this is why it's important if anyone's listening to this and they're younger and they're still going through this stuff. Mm. My insecurity made me play games. Right, sure. And once you start playing games, and after that relationship, actually, I never, ever played games again, right. ever. Because, right. and I think a lot of people have to learn that with the first relationship. Yeah. Or some people never learn it. And, yeah. they, and I just became completely disinterested in it. Any men that I met after that, that even I got a hint that they were game players, I wouldn't see them again or I wouldn't be interested in them because... The pain that I was in and what I had to get over was so awful. But can I just, it's just interesting, just pause you there because you've just spoken for a bit. And I just want to say, you, you're describing this as a story of how you were heartbroken. What I'm hearing in your story is a chap whose heart was broken earlier on yes. yeah. by you. Yeah, that I had no idea of. Without even, well, not even realising, but and this is this is forgivable because of age and lack of experience, but you, you probably weren't even entertaining the thought that he could be heartbroken because you're just thinking of you. Well, um, yes and no. I think what happened to me is because I felt very secure at the beginning because I didn't mm. like him and then I was like, I did like him and then, and then I actually started to feel more and more insecure. And because mm. I felt insecure... I was playing games that I was really strong and that I was fine mm. and I was like going out and because I didn't think because I, I think I felt that he had the power mm. and so I was playing very but immature you thought, games. But, very but have you thought of that in terms of talking? I mean, I think the games we play in relationships is an entire podcast chat. But do you have you as you're telling the story now? You know, we often think of heartbreakers. There's the heartbreaker and there's the heartbroken. Um, and people tend to... I don't to... think of him as a heartbreaker. No, 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 but, but mm. hear me out. 
So that's how we societally break it down. We assume you're the one who bro broke her right. heart, you're the one who had your heart broken. We, yeah. we tend to like, it suits us to split splits into those categories. Because you whereas, the whereas, point whereas what actually happened with one. you, clearly, uh, for me, listening on the outside as you tell the story, was that his heart was broken first. Well, yes. I mean, I think at the point of a breakup, people will divide mm. it into the heartbreaker and the heartbroken. Mm. Obviously, before you get to the point where you have a breakup, people's hearts have been broken on and off all the way through yeah, a relationship. That's and that's what leads to the disintegration mm. of a relationship. Mm. Absolutely. I think that people's lack of understanding of each other and mm. lack of empathy for where the other person is, is what causes breakup. And I remember at the time when I was absolutely heartbroken saying to a friend of mine, Oh my God, this pain is over. And I'm thinking very much of our follower on YouTube who said yes, this pain yeah. I can't deal with. And so, sorry if it's taken me a long time to get to this, but I just wanted to explain why I then, the pain was so, so awful. And we were continuing to work. Oh no, we were working in the same place. Continuing to work together. So I would see him and it was just, it's just a physical pain. And so if you're in heartbreak at the moment, I'm, I, I'm just wanting to say, I know how awful it is. And I know that people can be really dismissive when people are in heartbreak pain and say, oh, well, you'll get over it. There's plenty more fish in the sea. Da, 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 da. But that's like saying to somebody that's got some dreadful physical illness and is in pain at that time, well, you'll get over it. Mm. Yeah, but it doesn't take away from the fact that right now I'm in real pain. I don't know what to do. I wake with it, I sleep with it, I'm having to function in the world and go out because I'm not off sick, I'm not in a mm. hospital, I'm not, I can't take a p pill, mm. I can't go to the doctor, I've just got to get on with this terrible physical pain that's taking my breath away, that's not, you know, and, and like Jake was saying, he can't think, he can't eat, he can't do all of this. Um, and what I would say is, not for everyone, because I actually know somebody that never ever got over their heartbreak, never. I know two people actually, but what I would say is for the majority of people, you do get over it and it is one day at a time and you've just got to get through each day as best you can. You've got to distract and I'm just thinking about in lockdown how in one way it's very, very hard and you know, one you often would go out and drink on heartbreak, wouldn't they? You'd go out, you'd get pissed and you might think, oh, it's really difficult because you can't go out and get pissed, but actually... That doesn't help heal heartbreak at all, does mm. it? Going out mm. and getting pissed. Well, I wouldn't know. Um, oh, so you've never been heartbroken? No, never. Really? No, no one's ever heartbroken. No, no. I mean, I, I mean I'm mean, i sitting here listening to this thing and I don't quite know what I'm going to say. Uh, I mean, heartbreak... I've heartbroken... I've broken my own heart through stupid behaviour because I've hurt someone or let someone down. I've never had the situation yet, touch wood, I've never had the situation where... I so wanted something with someone and I couldn't have it and or the, the thing Nobody that I broke had off was with broken. you that you didn't want to no, break up no, with. No, I broke off with everyone. Apart from, the, I mean, there was one situation, one girlfriend with whom, um, but when I look back, it was much more of a lusty sort of thing. It was, and it was pride. And I think the, the interesting for me, for, thing for me about the whole heartbreak thing is, and I suppose it's, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, is how much of it is just pride, how much of it is feeling, how much of it is, is a deep, deep wound like grief, like you're mourning the loss of something. And I think when you're very, very young, and you know, you, when you're young, you experience everything intensely, don't you? Mm. You, you, you know, you're a heightened sense mm. of experience. Mm. And so I do think- One that of the, the good the, and bad things about being young. <laughs> yeah, one of the good, I do think, you know, what you were just saying then in terms of like in lockdown now, and if you're young, I think one of the tragic details of life, and we talk, probably have talked about this in our Confessions of a Modern Parent, is that when there is a tendency with grown-ups and adults to think that if you feel something intensely around love mm. and you're 16, 17, 18, mm. it's not real. Mm. And I find that so mean. horrendously mean. And I remember one of the things that really, it's funny, I'd, I'd use the phrase, broke my heart, but it was nothing that my first girlfriend did. It's what her mother said. And I remember, so I've had my heart broken by things said, but never actually by the person I was with. But I remember my first girlfriend, and I don't mind mentioning her name, Jane. Very, very fond memories of, of being with her. And I met, you know, we started going out when I was 14. I lost my virginity with her. We, we were together until I went to university. So, you know, it was a long time. I wasn't one of those teens who ran around gadding about. All of that, heartbreaking others, came after that. 
But I remember her mum saying something along the lines of, we've been together two years, so saying something to Jane, like, or to me, us, us both, like, well, you're only 16, of course this isn't going to be it. Mm, oh, and that cut us both, that. it cut us oh, both to the awful. absolute quick. And I think in many ways it sustained us for another yeah. year or two, because we didn't want to believe that that was the case. But what we felt was real, and I think it's really important in these lockdown times, if there are young people, young adults, struggling with their relationships, you know, I mean, I've, you know, my eldest Izzy, she's trying to maintain her new relationship with, under lockdown. Fleur, she's got a longer term restaurant. Uh, restaurant? <laughs> she's got a longer term <laughs> restaurant. She's got a longer term relationship, but she's trying to maintain it with great distance, you know. Uh, Maddie as well, she's a, a, you know, they're all at different points in their relationships. And we've um, been very, very respectful of very Maddie's respectful. feelings and said she's 17 and it was a very re new relationship with yeah. her lockdown. It's like, you know, who has the right to give another person what the definition of love is? Nobody. Yeah. And you know what you were just saying earlier? You know, what is heartbreak? Is it pride? Is it this? Is it that? Is it this? I can't remember what the list was. I think it's all those things. I think yes. all those things come into play. Yeah. It's loss of dreams. It's well, loss of hope. It's like you have to just completely reposition and I do think the way, where you were heading. Don't yeah, you? absolutely. I think heartbreak can be, it's almost like heartbreak is almost like nostalgia before anything's happened. It's a nostalgia for the future you were going to have. Mm. And you can be nostalgic about the future you were writing for yourself mm. that's been removed. Mm. And so I can see how that can work. And that's what I mean when I say... Well, and that's I, why even if it's lust, like you said earlier, or maybe for lust, lust is a very, very intense feeling. Oh, absolutely. So I think, again, I don't think you should even dismiss that. Mm. If you felt the pain of loss, mm. that to me is heartbreak. Well, yeah. Whether it be through lust or whatever, I mean, I, well, I mean, I'll talk about it. I mean, I remember when, I, when me and Jane grew apart and we grew apart, sadly, I mean, it was intellectually we grew apart. I knew I was heading off to university. She just didn't have any interest in, in learning beyond mm. a certain point. She was bright. She wanted to set up her own business. She wanted to run a restaurant and all that. So I said restaurant. Um, and I remember being, and this is curious, isn't it, when you use the term heartbreak. Was she a good cook then? She was, yeah, she was a good cook. Isn't that funny? Yeah, yeah. You've ended up marrying somebody you want to I mean, she was a great cook. Rest... She was only 16, 17, Isn't that 18. Isn't funny that you've ended up wanting to marry somebody who wants yeah, a restaurant? She was, she, was, she was the landlady <laughs> of, a, of a gastro pub in Harrow for years. Oh. Um, but, um, but I remember a heartbreak of sorts creeping in. But it wasn't done to me and it wasn't done by either of us. Heartbreak crept in when I realised there was a limit to what our relationship could be. Mm. And I remember then meeting someone else. Loss, on, then. Yeah, loss, yeah. And I remember falling in, not falling in love, but just fancying the hell out of a girl on my film A-level class. And then we partook in what at the time, at the age of 17, felt like an extramarital affair. Because I'd been with Jane for, for three or four years. Oh. Now, I never came fully clean about that. And then... To Jane? Yeah. So, and you hadn't so, finished with Jay? No. Oh. And so when I then, because I knew that I was drifting off to university. Right. And as I drifted off to university, part of me knew that me and Jane were kind of drifting away. And Did she kind of, know that? Yeah, I mean, there was a sadness that was just creeping in. She could tell. She could tell that I was losing Is this interest. just what you told yourself? To yeah, to basically. Your... I mean, I broke her heart. And when I look back, if I'm honest, I would say that most of my addiction and alcoholic problems were all about drowning the real guilt I felt most of my life about breaking a lot of people's hearts. And I say that not in a self-aggrandizing way. You can, it's very easy sometimes to say, I'm a heartbreaker, thinking I'm, I don't take any glory in that. No. A lot of, I know, that even very short-term relationships, flings probably by most people's standards, that lasted a bit longer than a fling, I really connected and women really connected with me and I really hurt them. Mm. And I really let them down. And I really... And if I'm really honest, I mean, this is something I've not Would told you. you. I've, not told you. I've, not, I've not told you this before. Would you have called I've not told you this player, before. Though? This is a big deal. This oh. is a big deal. Oh, God. Yes, yeah, so I don't, don't, yeah. Um, when I was editing one of the Nigel Slater documentaries, um, an old flame I discovered was editing in the edit suite next door to me. And I walked past the window and I saw the person in there and I said to who I was working with in my company, Paul, I said, oh my God. Such and such is in the other edit suite. Like, you know, as boys do, I explained to them what happened. And the long and the short of it was, was that, you know, if, if it could have got there, she wanted kids, she was, she, we were both connected on a lot of levels, we liked the same films, she was an editor, we both had a lot, you know. And I saw her in there, and I said, oh, what do I do, what do I do? 
I, it feels so strange. And he said, I'm just go and say hello. And it's classic boy. I said, I know. I said, but I really broke her heart. I mean, I, I mean, I had people coming to me telling me that I'd broken her heart. And I plucked up the courage to knock on the door and I, I opened and she, and she saw me and she paused and I opened the door and I said, oh, I won't say her name, but I said, blah, blah, blah. So I just wanted to say hello. I'm just editing next door. And she looked at me with such softness in her eyes. She said, I can't talk to you. It's too hard. Now this was, oh, no. we're talking seven, eight, nine years ago. No, yeah, before us meeting, you know, years and years before us meeting. This was way before my girlfriend, before you. And I was thinking, oh my God. And that really led me to think how deep mm -hmm. this is. And, it, and, it, and, and so thoughts and ideas around heartbreak have been a massive part of me wanting to drown out the hurt that I know I've done. Not in that, when I say hurt, I don't mean in a horrible, just in that gadabout way, boy being a boy, you know, I'm not making any commitments, but someone wants a commitment. Oh, no, I'm not committing to anyone, da, 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 da. And then I'd look back at Izzy's mum, and I'd look back at Fleur's mum, and I'd, I would think about, you know, it's made me re-realise that in my drinking years, I broke hearts because I, and really the biggest heart I'd broken at some point in there was my own, because I'd just gone, I'd put an axe through my heart. And that's why I thought I'd never get married. So why do you think you went to say hello to her? Because I felt bad. I didn't go, but I didn't go, I didn't go in to say hello to her because I wanted anything to come from it. But I felt there was such a knowledge and a, an awareness. So if I'd she'd really said hello, come her, in, would I you thought, have gone in and apologised? Yeah, probably would have done, yeah. Hmm. Well, no, I would have said, look, it got a bit, because it ended so weirdly. It was so brief, it was only a six month thing. But I know subsequently that she's had she kids, I know the guy she's married, I used to work, work with him in my first ever job. So, and I knew all of that about her, because of course one could look it up and as soon as I knew she was editing that sort of thing, what the hell is she up to, I don't know, where she been? Um, so it was like she's lived her life, but how she's lived her life and still, something that I'd chosen to forget about until I saw her in the, through the window, I hadn't even thought, and I, you know, that makes me feel horrible just describing it, I feel mm. shallow, I feel all those things, and yeah, so, so heartbreak funny, is a curious thing. It's funny, isn't it, because we can get so angry with the person that has fallen out of love with the person we care about. So mm. say, 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 say somebody breaks the girl's hearts. Mm. I'm going to hate them. Yes, I, I I'm going to hate their guts. Mm. Right? Which, I mean, I hope I'm going to sit myself down and rationalise with that because... Well, I've already got really not, two boyfriends. It's not really their fault if they don't feel the feelings no. anymore. And... I mean, you know, it's that strange thing, isn't it, with heartbreak where you where you can where you swing where you can swing from feeling very angry with the person because they've caused you this terrible pain mm. and then feel this deep sadness and, and wanting them back. Mm. And I think that I mean I've watched friends of mine do it over the years and make one mistake after another. It's like I really do believe if somebody wants somebody, they let you know. I think I just think when mm. people keep chasing and keep calling and texting and drunk calling, mm. all of that stuff just just exacerbates the pain. It goes on for longer. I think you have to cold turkey. I really, that would be my, mm. my best bit of advice is just to hold your nerve, grit your teeth and get through it. Because if somebody's had enough, and you are constantly calling them and texting them, you're only going to make things worse. And that's interesting. I think this would make also a great chat about parenting because I would like to think that I've already seen how, with more with my eldest girls, Fleur and Izzy, there have been many situations they've been in, certainly principally more Izzy, where she's sought the advice of a man who happens to be a dad who was that kind of bloke, mm. who was that kind of bloke who was like, you know, fleet foot and oh, I'm, I'm non-committal, this is it, you know, it's either we just have a fling and you've just got to understand there's no strings attached, that sort of bloke. Um, because actually I feel that that again, it's like being, what, what is the purpose of being a recovering alcoholic and having been that sort of man? Mm. I was never a nasty man, but th those elements to me, I don't like, I don't like them about men in general or people. And so the fact that I can, I've been them, I hope means that I can help my girls when they're getting signals from a boyfriend 
or from someone, do you know what I mean? I can sort of help steer them through the psychology of what's going in the boy's head. Or I can sometimes, sometimes it's a curse, I can hear what's being said and I'm thinking I know exactly what this boy's going through. Mm. I know exactly where they're at and I know exactly where they're not connecting with you. And so, you know, it's a curse and it's a sort of a privilege. I mean, I would say that I, I know what it means to be heartbroken because I would say it was the slowest, longest form of breaking my own heart in terms of relationships which is why meeting you, I don't want to sound gooey here, but meeting you was really that weird opportunity that never seemed, I, I never thought would come along where mm. someone was big enough to heal that broken heart. Because mm. I've broken my own heart massively. I'd not even broken it, I'd just kind of done that. I'd trudged on it and I'd scrunched it into the floor and I'd squeezed the essence out of it. Mm. But it, when I think back to all of the people's hearts I've broken en route to that, if I'm really honest, when I go through the 12 step recovery thing and I talk about, I think you get to that thing about amends, I would like to make amends. And I think when I knocked on that woman's door in the edit, I think I was partly wanting to enact the amends step. Mm. Well, maybe you should explain what that is. Well, the amends, you know, I don't know which step it is, but one of the 12 steps is, is that you make a list of the people that you've hurt and where in a circumstance where it's not gonna make their lives distressed or more damaging to their lives, you did make a decision to make amends, apologize to them, or sort of outline how you take responsibility for what you did. So long as that doesn't mean that you cause more distress to yeah. anyone else. Yeah. So for example, it might be that you had an affair and they're married and they don't need to know that, that you know, and they're set up, so. But, I think know. the important thing is when you, but when you have a breakup, and, and this might be really annoying to anyone that's in the pain of it now, you do, you can choose to learn incredible things from it mm. and grow as a person or, and of course there's lots of grades in between this, or you can, it can be a wound that never heals and can affect every other relationship that you have. Mm. So I think you have to make a choice on how you're gonna grow. Be rigorous with yourself on what, where you went wrong where did you go wrong? Because it might be that where you went wrong was to choose somebody that was a wrong one. Yeah. So imagine, you know, so if you're with somebody that really, it's like I always say, if you choose a, whatever we choose, we kind of want at that moment and we can complain and complain about them, but we chose them. So it could be that you've messed up a relationship through your behaviour and you weren't listening to your partner and you weren't empathetic to them and you weren't responding to their requests to make the relationship work. And from that, you can really be rigorous and grow from that and change that in the future with your next relationship. But if you've chosen somebody that has done you harm and that hasn't been kind and hasn't been decent, and hasn't cherished you and hasn't loved you and hasn't done all those things, then that's what you have to learn. Mm. And that's how you have to grow. And that's why you have to take a big break from having somebody else and work out what it is that you want. Because too many people fall into a relationship just because they want someone and not without any mm. idea of what they want from that mm. relationship and that person. Mm. And it's about finding a way Finding your way to find out what you actually want because you can't ask for it if you don't know what yeah. it is. This whole chat has given me three great ideas for <coughs> three new three new podcasts. Right. Do we have types? Because I think a little bit a little yeah. bit of what you're saying there is about is there a type, you know, is yeah. there a certain type that we go for? Mm -hmm. And 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 how actually sometimes that can trap you yourself into thinking, no, he's not my type. Well but that's why he I might think be it's the type really you good. need. If you've got hours and hours stretching ahead of you in lockdown yeah. with the pain of heartbreak, go through your relationship yeah. with a microscope. Look for the things, write down a list. Mm. What made your heart sing about this person? Mm. What did you find really difficult? What did you really hate? Mm. Often, you might be surprised by actually the list of what made your heart sing about this person. Very small. It's actually very small. Yeah, and yeah. from that, you can start to grow and you can start to hear and go, yeah. well, actually, and write a list of what do I never have to put up with again? Yeah. What do I, how do I never have to be humiliated again? How do, what do I never have to, and then all, and just keep writing lists. So you can start getting a picture of where you maybe chose wrongly and how you can, moving forward, choose better. I'll tell you who my heart goes out to, a lot of talk about hearts here, um, is 
are in lockdown, coronavirus times, quarantine. Those people, not that have separated are, and are in the broken hearted stage, if you like, knowing that a relationship's over, and not those who are sort of in the discovery that, but those who are in mid heartbreak, who are going through the complex, because we're all at the same place. Stage. Yeah, oh. and so life has just probably, if you're not living together, separated you, or worse still, kept you together when you're in this terrible sense of a heart imagine. being ripped mm. or just starting to be ripped, because oh. that's how it can work. Oh. So, and two other things I think would make interesting chats off the back of what you said is, <laughs> only because we've just seen the series, but this again ties into, do we willingly allow ourselves to be heartbroken because love is blind? Yeah. Is love blind? I think that's an interesting topic. And the games people play. Because I think the games that people do people play... I think people can fall in love with the idea of precisely. being in love. And that's, that's why it's another really good thing to write down yeah. your list. And think about when you were a younger child, what was it you wanted when mm. you imagined having a relationship? Mm. Was it a pie in the sky dream? Mm. Was it something really ridiculous? Because sometimes people break up because actually a person doesn't tick every one of their hundred boxes. And it's about where do you let those boxes go? So mm. write, that's what I would say. I would say write some lists out, write out your columns. What oh, made my heart Sorry. sing? What did I like about him or her? What did I love? What drove me crazy? What am I pleased that I'll never have to? Put it up on the bloody wall. Final, final comment as we sum up. Have I, have you had, could, would you say, trying to choose my words carefully here, that you've had your heart broken within this, can you have your heart broken within a relationship that survives? Yeah, I definitely did have my mm. heart broken within this relationship. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. We're still here though, aren't we? Yeah, that's true. And I still like you and I still love you. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's right. I feel like I've got a very long list of people I need to make amends to. <laughs> God, don't die. Just, just put it to one side. <laughs> okay, right. Right, guys. Thanks, well, look, guys. Please subscribe, please follow. Please like if you likey. Like if you likey. Don't, don't, not, just don't bother with not liking. Um, and if you're listening on podcasts, please do leave a comment. We like to photo, uh, we like to screenshot them and put them on our Instagram because we love the comments there. Um, and we and check us that. out on YouTube if you haven't. Yeah. We've, got a, we've got a really fun reality yeah. show. We've got cookery lessons at the moment through lockdown. Yeah. We've got mental health films. We've got movie reviews, TV reviews. We've got so much going so on much. there that you don't have to feel alone. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.